So, tea plates. Tea plates were actually the reason why I started making these videos because I hate misinformation. And I saw a video, and I know it sounds like a very petty thing, but I saw a video that claimed that if you change the center, the plastic tea bar to a carbon, you will have to shim up or something like that. I can't remember the exact video. You'll have to shim up the uh, rear motor mount to m have the same, um, I can't believe it was a right height or distance to the top. I can't remember what it was, but I didn't see it again because I, I really, really despise misinformation. That is absolutely incorrect. So when you have a standard T plate, your base is here. So it doesn't matter how thin this is. It doesn't matter how thin it becomes. It will keep the rear part in the same um, height, even if you use this or this or the plastic one. So here, you can measure from up here, this is a flat ledge, and down to this. Oh, sorry. So I will say we are within a tenth here. Yep. So just going to drop this off, put in the carbon fiber. And I would say, sorry, that we are exactly at the same place. And that makes sense because it's the plane here that meets the plane here, and it's the same in this. So with that out of the way, we can actually talk about what uh, T-bars, T-plates is. T-plate is the um, the link, of course you know this, it's the link before the, between the rear part and the main chassis. And it, um, it acts as the spring uh, for the rear part. So this is purely spring based. It's not damper based from side to side. That's why a center damper, like a disc damper, like this one, provides damping from left to right because the T plate will only function as a spring. So you have different, different things you can choose from. The plastic, obviously the stock. I will go to, uh, go to my track. It's right that way. And you can see a completely stock car drive with this, and it's perfectly fine because it doesn't have an excess amount of power because it has a uh, 60 teeth uh, pinion. So this is plenty fine if you change the tires and all that, blah, blah, blah. Going up, it's uh, the carbon fiber one. And there is a lot of confusion. I don't know if it's confusion or just misinformation or uh, on awareness, I don't know. But people tend to think that there is a, a difference in FRP and carbon. So now I can already hear some of you typing like, oh yeah, I, I experienced so and so and so. Okay, okay, let me explain. This is a spring and as such, the only function it has is spring rate. Okay, so the amount of a return this has to original form determines the spring rate. This has slower spring rate return. This is FRP. Um, no, t uh, TRP or FRP? I can't remember. It's, it's the yellow one. Um, then this one. Uh, this one is fiberglass. Yep. And they have different characteristica. So given all, if this has the same spring return as this, they will act completely the same. And I can already hear you. There's no, there's no debating on this. If it has the same lateral return of force, they will act the same. That is why there is a different 
amount of thicknesses. That's also why there's different um, uh, different types of um, uh, materials because some will hold up better, keep their spring return rate better in different conditions. So fiberglass being um, this type here, it is very well suited for um, track conditions where the temperature doesn't change that much. Um, and what I mean by that is if the temperature changes much, the fiberglass is a lot of the component is uh, epoxy and epoxy um, reacts a lot to heat and cold. So this will in cold conditions be stiffer than in warmer conditions. Um, so yeah, and the carbon on the other hand, it's somewhat abs abs absorbent, sorry for the English, um, the same as this. And when the humidity changes a lot, the carbon reacts differently because it's somewhat absorbed. It's so small, like it's indifferent. That's also why people talking about different materials and all of these, forget about it. If they have the same spring return rate, that's what you're looking for. You're looking for something that's easy to drive. And you will have different cutouts in these and people will tell you that makes it different. Yes, it does because what you're doing is changing the return force. So that's also what you're doing when you're thinning this out. You are changing the force of which or the speed of which it can return to original state. Okay. So these were the T-bars. In my setup videos, other videos, I explain when to use what. So this is just an explanation of what a T-bar is and the uh, the materials it was made of. If you want some more in-depth um, knowledge about the T-bar, like I had a guy saying that the SSG, the silver ones, even though it's the same thickness as this, uh, he had a lot more red traction with that. Yes, of course you will. Because even though the SSG and this one, like the SSG is the silver carbon one, it has a carbon center. So even if the SSG carbon ones are the same thickness as this carbon, the SSG will always be softer and provide him with more retraction. Because the SSG is a woven metal woven fiber on top and it doesn't have the same return force as a, a carbon fiber piece, like a fully thick carbon fiber piece. So what the SSGs are relying on is the middle piece of carbon. And that is also going to be thinner if these are exactly the same uh, thickness. So of course, it's going to be, f it's going to feel uh, softer, easier to drive, but that's because of the way it's made, that's because it has less spring return force. So hopefully it's useful. It's a little bit more advanced. I think I'm going to put this in the advanced category. So next time.